Welcome back, Controls Champions. So, I have a quandary for you to ponder today. We've been looking at sequences. Sure is convenient to be able to drive outputs directly from within the sequence, but what if we want to drive that output somewhere else in the program? Let's ponder that together. first obvious thing you might think of is, well, if we have two steps that want to drive that same thing, like this, I'll just control C, control V, copy that rung, wouldn't this work? But the answer is definitely not, because this isn't just a latch or unlatch, this is a constantly writing coil. So when everything in front of it is true, it turns on, When everything in front of it is false, it turns off, it actively turns off. And that means that these two rungs would essentially be fighting each other. So the next thing you might think is, well, couldn't we just change this to a latch rung? And the answer is, yes, we could, or set reset in this uh, environment. We could, but now things get messy because we're setting it here. We need to remember to reset it at some point, either when we exit the rung, like uh, another branch here, or when we go into the next step. And that also means that working between multiple places, now we have to cross-reference this all over the place to try and figure out what thing turned on that output when we're doing debug. And that can be a real pain in the butt. Instead, I find many programmers prefer to have a separate routine that they put all their outputs in and they manage that interplay. So we're gonna talk about that today. I'm gonna to show you the most basic example that I would still consider usable and reasonable in a real machine. The real machines that I've seen that could use just a single output on a sequence and not have to have a separate routine is probably 1% or less. Usually there's enough complication that you really just want this other routine. So we're going to go through it, make something that works, and I will expand on this in future videos. So I made a new routine. It's empty right now. It's right here. It's actually not even being called. If I add a rung. The first most basic thing we want to do here is drive a coil, and this coil is going to be that same thing we were just looking at. It's going to be in the global variables. O oh, push or extend. Okay, and we want to drive that with what? Well, the first thing that we could look at here is, well, this is true whenever we're in step 10 here. So just for convenience, I'm going to go to my all bitwise ladder logic sequence right here. This is uh, just nice and simple to visualize while we're doing our output rungs. So step dot one, this is uh, step dot one. And that was in sequence one dot LD. So if I give us a contact sequence one underscore LD dot step dot one. Okay, so whenever we're in that step, in that sequence, I want this to turn on. Well, we could do this in other sequences also, couldn't we? So I could go to our sequence two, ladder logic, and we can look at uh, which one of our states we wanted to drive an output in. We already have our output rungs here as separate things, uh, so that's an S3. And the thing that I'm writing, we would delete these two rungs. It's, it would be separate now. So that would be in parallel with this. Right click and insert contact in parallel. This is sequence two underscore LD dot S. We said it was S3. By the way, rather than having a prepared program here to talk through, I decided I would try something different and write this program while I talk through it. So if you like this format better or worse or indifferent, uh, let me know in the comments because I'd like to know how I should continue doing these to help the most people in the most efficient way. Okay, so now we've got two different things can turn on this extent. And that's, that's great, right? So we could write two rungs just like this why don't I just copy paste this one and 
I don't remember for sure what step this was, but that's not important. Maybe it's step three, and this was S4, I believe. And this would be push or retract now. And this would work, but it's not really complete. This, this doesn't fill all the needs that a typical machine has. So let's expand on this a little bit. First of all, what if we have a programming bug or there is a conflict between two different sequences that are trying to call these things and we end up driving both of these outputs? That can be physically bad for the valve that we're using to drive this cylinder because if the valve is allowed to pull in, so to speak, the solenoid can move whatever it's moving, it reduces the current in that solenoid and so that's the condition it was designed for. But if they're fighting, probably one of the coils will get the piece moving, the pin or, or whatever it is, and will have that reduced current state. And the other solenoid is gonna end up still at maximum current trying to pull that in. And while I haven't seen this happen personally, because we always put in some protection for that, that it has, has been reported to burn out solenoids. And even if it's not burning it out, it's gonna heat it up. And that's not really what you want. So it's pretty easy. We can just add a normally closed contact and say, hey, if we're actively trying to do the other thing, don't do this thing. We do that on both of them here. By the way, the way to click and drag text like I'm doing here, you can't just click and drag. That doesn't work, but if you click once, now the text is selected. Now you can click and drag it to any of these places. Hot tip for you. Okay, so that's getting a little closer now. We're protecting the solenoid valve from physical damage with these. What else does this need to do in a normal machine application? Well. The first thing that comes to mind is we often want to be able to move things in manual mode. So we might have a push button or we might have something on the HMI that lets us jog or cycle this cylinder or any other parts of the machine. So the first thing you might think of is, well, we can just drop in another contact in parallel right here and we can give that a name, I pusher extend PB. You could even include the word manual if you wanted to. But what happens now? Well, now this is, in a sense, working the same way as the sequences at the same time. So any old operator can come push this button while the sequences are running and it could affect this output. And we don't want that. We want the machine to run itself or the operator to be able to move things manually, not both at the same time. So the way we typically get around this is by having a separate mode, an auto mode for the sequences to do their thing and a manual mode for the operator. In fact, that is industry standard. Expect to see that anywhere. It's also called uh, hand or auto in some parts of the industry. So you might hear it called HOA for hand or auto. So this isn't the way we want to do this. Let's restructure this run quick. I'm going to go on fast forward because this will take just a second and then we'll talk through it again. Okay, that looks a little better. So now we have an auto mode bit in front of all of the sequence states that would trigger this output. And we say when we're not in auto mode, then the operator is allowed to move things in manual. And depending on how you program this stuff, you might have a separate bit for manual mode versus auto mode. That's up to you. This is one way I've seen it done and it works fine. You know, sometimes why have another bit? Uh, have a good reason if you're going to make a separate bit. So I will do this same thing to the other rung. We'll take a quick look and that is it. This, this is all it takes to have a nice, simple output management in your program. I've seen these get a lot more complicated and like I say, we'll go into that in another video. But for now, I wanted to give you something that gets you started. By the way, a few more quick tips. Uh, you can click and drag and it'll move, or you can click and drag and hold the control key. Notice the icon changes, it puts a plus there. So that's what I just did there to add this auto mode. I'll do the same thing right here. Another thing you can do is when you click and drag, you see these arrows, you can say put in parallel above or below. And that's what I'm doing here. So in auto, any of those and in manual, click and drag with the control and let's do a retract. 
Now that uh, variable didn't exist yet. I had already created the push or extend, but not the retract. So I'll say okay. And if I were going to follow my convention from other videos, I might put these in the global variables table. And uh, then I might add some buttons here, but I don't think that's really important for this concept to make sense. So that's that. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. There's one thing I like more than making these videos. It's hearing what you have to say about them. So um, leave a comment, share, like, or subscribe. Ooh.